Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's live coding happy hour. Um, and also happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone out there uh, celebrating all their fun Irish heritage and friends uh, from across the world. Um, this is a show brought to you by the ServiceNow Developer Program, where we unwind for a very nice long work week, have a couple of fun drinks, talk about some of the newest features that we've got going on. Uh, and instead of like a well-polished demo, <laughs> dive into something new that we're all trying to learn and get familiar with. Um, but before we dive into anything else, I wanted to draw attention to the fact that we are doing our Utah release at the moment. Uh, we're actually nearing the kind of penultimate weeks of that, which is crazy to think about. Um, so please check out our Utah content calendar. Thank you so much, Chuck, at devlink.sn slash Utah for everything that you might have missed, as well as all the fun things still coming up on our schedule uh, for the next couple of weeks. Um, but before we dive into... Uh, pad for St. Pad Tricks Day. Uh, oh. Let's go around the horn. Oh, <laughs> and, so I can't hurt, take credit. Lord, I hurt. can't take credit for it. It was Sharon's fun. So uh, before we dive in, uh, my name is Lauren McManaman. I'm a dev advocate and let's do a full round of introductions. So I'll go to my my left, the camera's right. You did it. All right. You did it. Hey, everybody. My name is Chuck Tomasi, Senior Developer Advocate at ServiceNow. Been here for a long time. T 2010 <laughs> is when I started. I was a customer for a couple of years before that. And a long, long history of development and sysadmin and all kinds of fun tech experience going back to the early 80s. Who's next? Sharon. That would next. be me. <laughs> so I am Sharon Barnes, ServiceNow developer at Novant Health. And I am also a developer in VP, so I enjoy uh, learning all of the new things that come out with Utah and other features that are around. And I'm looking forward to see what we're going to come up with PAD today. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm so excited to explore PAD. I look back through our like VODs, and I don't think we've done a dedicated PAD episode in about like two years. So I think it's That's time. That's what, about four releases? So we're a bit I... behind, yeah. Yeah, I think our last one was like Rome. So I was like, oh, okay, probably uh, probably time to cover some fun uh, process automation stuff once again. Uh, but before we dive into content, especially with today being St. Patrick's Day, uh, let's go around the helm and introduce what everyone is uh, drinking for today. So Chuck? Me, I have a Four Peaks. I got a local brew, Four Peaks Pumpkin Porter. Couldn't find a stout on short notice. This has been sitting in the refrigerator. In fact, I looked at the expiration date. Well, it was it was freshest, freshest by 12, 18, 2022. So it's not freshest right now, but it'll do. Yeah, it'll do. What about you, Sharon? <laughs> All right. So today I'm not trying something new, but I am trying something very Irish to go with, Additional. which is there a regular go. old Guinness draft. And I'm looking forward to <laughs> enjoying trade? that. <laughs> oh, perfect. Well, I think Chuck and I both might require some Irish look today. Uh, I pulled up what is, uh, as I was looking for something dark, because I was like, I don't really like beer. I, I need a nice dark drink. And they had a chocolate nigori. Uh, so it's chocolate sake. Uh, keep in mind, it might be awful. I have no idea. It was made in Japan. So that's a good, that's a good sign instead of made in like California. Uh, but you know, no, no promises on that. So wish me all the luck I, I need today, guys out there. <laughs> awesome. Sounds like a plan. Well, we got a good, all... good, good group in the chat today. I know. People all the way from Brazil. Let us know where you're from, people. This is, this is fun. Yeah. While we uh, get everyone's uh, drinks ready, let's do a, let's do a quick recap of process automation designer uh, in general. So uh, whether you have used it or not, process automation designer is a phenomenal tool for the sake of automation on the ServiceNow platform. Like I said, it's been out for a couple of years now. It was kind of released in tandem with workspaces to really help agents get stuff done 
quickly without the need to master automation themselves. So essentially, you can create these things called playbooks that allow them to work their way through a series of actions that need to be done or can, or that can be done on behalf of them. Um, but also, it allows them to track all those things very easily. So if they needed to do things, they're all still tracked in a nice, um, cohesive fashion. It allows them a little bit of their own control over the process. Um, but there was always one glaring issue, which was outliers, right? I think anyone that's programmed automation has always had the problem of outliers in the system, either having to program for them or allowing people the flexibility to handle them on their own. Pad always buckled at that because if they had to go outside of the playbook, you either had to like write really comprehensive notes in the incidents or tasks that you were working or not, and then no one knows what you did. So um, there were two ways of accommodating this. Um, a couple of really uh, ingenious people kind of hacked into PAD and created this ability to create optional tasks within PAD. Um, it was a very heavily coded thing, um, definitely something that would be a little bit harder to carry from release to release. It was basically like a, you had to rely on jelly, I believe, <laughs> believe it or not, to do it. I'm just I kidding. know, <laughs> still, still <laughs> jelly in 2023, great. Um, so hopefully Utah, as you will see today, helps with that, that specific use case. Did I cover everything, Chuck, or is there anything I'm missing? Uh, Lauren, give me a an overview of how PAD relates to Flow Designer, because Flow is usually what I think of when I think of running automating a process. What does what does process automation designer do for us that that Flow doesn't? So absolutely. So basically, with PAD, uh, it's kind of it's great for both the agents and the business people that might be designing this process, right? Any developer that's worked with the business side of operations know it's kind of like being an ambassador to another world um, in translating the requirements into automations that need to occur. Um, so essentially they can set up a lot of placeholders of things that need to happen. They don't even have to be tasks yet or things being done on service now. And then those specific actions can be tied directly to flows or other types of automation on the platform, whether that be automated notifications or things like that. So it basically is a, a nice designer and uh, UI for things that are being performed through Flow Designer. Correct. Well said. Well said. Okay, <laughs> it's like a little bit of a trivia question. Um, which, we didn't rehearse that at all, so I'm like, I hope we don't catch her off guard. <laughs> I mean, hey, if there's a show to catch me off guard, uh, it is life coding happy hour. <laughs> um, so also in theme with today, uh, we have prepared some uh, fun. St. Patrick's Day themed trivia as well. Uh, so stick around for that in the uh, right. in the chat and play along if you will. So uh, while I test out this to make sure it's not uh, poison, uh, is there anything else about uh, optional activities or things like that that we'd like to discuss before diving straight into them? Or no, I don't, of the day? I don't think so. It, it, it is a fairly common use case when we came out with process automation designer. Like you said, the the designer is going to use pad it's exposed through playbooks that you see in the workspace and say hey what's my next task and and the designer says what they want to see in the next it could be the next step in a in a lane it could be let's run these in parallel so it gives people prescriptive order let's say you're decommissioning a server, for example. You know, what have you done with the licenses? What have you done with the equipment? What have you done with the rest of the software that's on the system? Did you back it up? Did you destroy it? All that good stuff. There's a series of steps. It's a process, but occasionally you get that random, oh, and by the way, you know, we need to <laughs> send a copy of this data off to our governing agency to make sure that you know, it's like, well, that's not in our standard playbook. And the heck, if I'm going to replicate that just for this one random instance, so let's see how it's done, Lauren. Awesome. Well, if you can tell by my uh, watering eyes, the uh, chocolate sake is a big fat no. So we will be switching to ginger ale <laughs> for the rest. Oh, nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead. I haven't touched the pumpkin porter yet. I'm going to wait for that one. <laughs> yeah, you're up next. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Woof. There we go. Can we see everything okay, guys? Yep. Yes. 
Awesome. So from the context of App Engine Studio, so right now uh, I will say I'm re working right out of a PDI. I always try to keep things pretty uh, consistent in, in that regard of like, I like to utilize resources that everyone can use. Um, even though that we are currently before GA, GA for Utah happens next week, fun fact. Um, but you can get your Utah versions of your PDIs uh, now. So go ahead and, and snag one if you would like. So I was trying to think of a uh, like a fun St. Patrick's Day themed use case, um, which was a lot more difficult than I thought it was. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, today we are doing a pest control application, as you, you might take recall. Care of those snakes, right? We got to take care of some give, snakes. give them some of your sake. Uh, that'll take. Care oh, of them. yeah, that'll, that'll nuke them off the face of the earth. Uh, so. Uh, typically with uh, playbooks and things like that, again, they're being usually consumed and utilized most heavily by agents. So I was thinking about a use case of, oh, we're we're opening up a new pest control business, um, you know, on this beautiful Emerald Island, and we're having significant success, right? There's all these uh, pests that need control. There's tons of requests coming in. So we need some sort of automated mechanism uh, to help, you know, get our customers satisfied. So we're going to start off by just creating a simple application. So uh, we're going to walk through the app creation process here. Uh, what is a good name for our app for the day? Um, St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's Day <laughs> Pest Control. I like it. We need some nice uh, Irish background music. <laughs> I have some faves I've defaulted to in the past. We might get we might get our video pulled for licensing if we did that. Uh, See, and I joke, but this is the one day that I'm allowed to to listen to bagpipes, and my family doesn't complain or isn't allowed <laughs> to complain. Yeah, hey, they get to complain, but not that's allowed. Not Irish? <laughs> that's Scottish. <laughs> well, I'm actually Scottish. It's close enough. <laughs> oh, wow! Don't tell the Irish that. <laughs> They're neighbors. We like each other sometimes. <laughs> so uh, fun fact. So let's do our first trivia question of the day while I kind of sketch out the bare bones of this new application. Um, can anyone in the chat tell me what St. Patrick's Day is actually celebrating? That is our first <laughs> trivia question of the day. Because um, as I was talking with it, but with my friends, I realized not many people know. So that's our first question today. Put it in the chat if you happen to know. Celebrating when they make the Chicago River green. I mean, that's been done for quite a, a substantial amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I will also use this opportunity to show off another facet of Utah, which is uh, creating... Uh, well, I guess we're not using, never mind. I, I, I fibbed a little bit there. Uh, so <laughs> ignore me. Uh, we're going to create this from an extended table. We're going to do this off the task. There we go. That's what I wanted to call out. Um, so one of the Utah features, it's very small, so it's easily overlooked. Um, but now the most common extended tables are at the top of the list. So you don't have to keep scrolling. Nice oh, simple like improvements. Yeah, simple improvements, uh, but a very nice quality of life. So we'll just call this um, pest control request. We'll give it an auto number. We're team. celebrating Sir St. Patrick Stewart, the patron saint of Star Trek. No, <laughs> no. Google Sorry. is letting me down. Google's let you're, you're cheating already. It's the first question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll give you the answer. So the uh, fun fact, this is the official feast day of St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, uh, famous for bringing uh, old Christianity to the country back in the 5th century AD. So a long, 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 long time ago. What about that whole thing about driving the snakes out? He is also attributed with that, but it is his feast day. That's what you're actually, that's what you're actually celebrating is, is Catholic feast day. Fun Were fact. there ever snakes in Ireland? Uh, that is yes. up to that's up to user discretion. Um, the Ice <laughs> Age, uh, the, uh, there were snakes, uh, I believe, but they were pre-Ice Age. So um, uh, they have not found any yet archaeologically. So leave so that up to your discretion. I drove all the whales out of Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, for St. Tomasi Day. That's what they celebrate that for. So um, now that we've just created a very simple table, 
um, we can go ahead and start with our process automation designer. Now, I'm always a little bit confused with regards to App Engine Studio because you can examine playbooks from App Engine Studio, but you can't create them from App Engine Studio. Um, so if I go ahead to process autom or if I go ahead and spell it correctly, automation designer, there we go. Pop this guy open, we can start finagling through. Uh, here's our next question. Since we've got a lovely Guinness drinker on the call today, uh, how many pints of Guinness are consumed worldwide on St. Patrick's Day? Ooh. Not enough. Not enough. I don't know. If you see the number, you might think it's a little <laughs> overabundant. <laughs> I was going to say too much. Um, yeah. <laughs> three million. Uh, I I keep going. <laughs> keep going. Seven million. <laughs> it's thirteen million. Thirteen million. Thirteen million. That's yeah. a, that's, that's globally beer. though. I can I can understand that globally. You can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think of how many, there's billions of people in the world. Now, granted, the people in Southeast Asia probably aren't hoisting a pint of Guinness. <laughs> but also, it's like the heaviest beer imaginable. It's not like a Bud no, Light. No, 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 no. You, you got you to gotta try some serious stouts and porters. There's it's some. the heaviest beer that I will drink. If, That's if fair. Your, if your spoon doesn't stand up in it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right. Do you find it entertaining that it used to be a dry holiday? Because, oh. well, it was the Feast of a Saint. <laughs> Good point. It was a dry holiday. That's very correct. And also uh, a lot of the, um, uh, forgive me, I'm not Catholic. I don't remember this. It's not like haram, but it's like they're, <laughs> forgive me, I'm a, I'm a Presbyterian. It's okay. um, but they can't eat specific types of meat on that day either. So the day where everyone's like binging and drinking, <laughs> it's like most, you know, historically, that was not the most common thing. To oh, do. hey, it lands on a That's Friday. Beautiful. So there's probably not a whole lot of corned beef and cabbage going on. It's probably fish for the Catholics today. Also, fun fact, that was an American tradition that was started corned beef and cabbage for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> so uh, uh, back to old process automation designer. Wait, we um, got a question in the chat. It says how to set up cross scope updating of tasks in a custom action e PowerShell. Wow, this sounds like a great question for the community. Uh, <laughs> I don't know you're going to get a lot of technical support because it's a little off topic for what we're talking about a process automation designer today. But thank you for participating. Absolutely. I always, always pre appreciate it. If you've got questions um, about process automation, pro I, I still mm -hmm. a trip over that process automation designer or you know, App Engine, App Engine Studio, we're happy to take those. Heck yeah. So uh, going back to Pad, so we've created an application. We've created a table to kind of trigger things off of. Um, and also we've opened up Process Automation Designer to create our first process. Um, it's very similar to Flow Designer, as we can see. It has a trigger. So we can define our own conditions for when this runs or use an existing one that is already set up. So if you want to create multiple different pathways for something to follow, you could also do that as well. So we are going to do this when a new record is created. So one of our pest control things are created is when we will trigger our process. If it'll load, there we go. So we call this the pest control request. If it will, let me click it. There we go. Um, you can also add conditions very similar to Flow Designer as well. So if this is for a certain type of request or a certain uh, priority or things like that, um, that is when you could uh, add those things in as well. Just you real quick, I noticed I, a couple of things I want to point out. One is the name of your table is pest control request. It's so tempting. And I fall into this too. It's like, well, I already have pest control in the scope. So why don't I just call this table request? You're going to find like five other tables called request. And then you got to look at the actual table name. So yeah. think about that when you're naming and labeling your tables. Good. Very good best practice to add there. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, pad that doesn't necessarily apply to flow designer is the ability to cascade these triggers. So if someone were to build an application 
uh, that utilized pest control request as it's like parent table, uh, you could actually cascade this process to run on any child tables that extend off of pest control request as well, um, which is a which is pretty uh, nice to do. So if you had something to run on all tasks, you could create a process for just the task table in general, and it would cascade down to everybody else, which is pretty, pretty nice. Uh, next question. Where was the first St. Patrick's Day parade? Chicago. No. No. New York. No. Dublin. No. <laughs> Nowhere in Europe. Nowhere in Asia. Nowhere in Africa. It's somewhere in the United States. I'll give you that. Um, it's Boston. somewhere. In... <laughs> no, that's a big one. It was in 1601, if that helps, which it probably does not. Uh, Jamestown? <laughs> no. There wasn't much around in 1601. <laughs> I know. I was thinking. It really limits the options. Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's the closest one geographically that you've named. It was in uh, St. Augustine, Florida in 1601. It was, or what today's is uh, St. Augustine, Florida. So, okay. well, that makes sense. That's a really old city. Is it? I mean, I don't really associate yes. Florida with the highest Irish population. No, neither do I, but it's a really old city. It was one of the first ones founded. I believe it was a Spanish settlement at the time. True. Good point. All right. So, uh, lanes. So, instead of having stages, uh, Process Aut Automation Designer has lanes, which kind of translates to its backbone being more business oriented than actually like, uh, uh, like tech oriented, like Flow Designer is, right? Te uh, Flow Designer represents a lot of things that you would see represented in all types of development, whereas this is trying to more align with how a business would structure an automated process to occur. So for our pest control, uh, what type of lanes are we thinking here, team? Some sort of like uh, processing stage of like how bad of a of this of uh, this uh, issue is this? Yeah, yeah. Usually All there's right. like so the assessment. Assessment. Yep. Ooh, I, I like assessment. So we can actually go back and configure. So assessments like that. Um, Maybe like field team deployment or scheduling, possibly. Scheduling would be good. Scheduling. And then uh, deployment or resolution. And then maybe follow up afterward. Sure. Why not? Yes. And when you're creating these lanes, you're also creating the order of events as well. So you're not just creating these buckets for things to fall in, but the behavior in which they respond. So if you looked when we were just naming these stage, we can dictate when they start. Things don't have to go back to back to back. You can have them go concurrently with other stages. So if you wanted both the assessment and scheduling to occur in parallel, you can. Um, obviously, with this language, though, again, it's leaning more towards the business, like doing things in parallel is a very like computer sciencey way of putting it. So uh, or just do everything immediately, just do it as soon as it possibly can and things like that. Um, we can also provide uh, descriptions. Who's giggling? I am because I'm thinking I want everything now. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, everything right now. Uh, that's how the customer would probably ideally like it, but probably not the most uh, feasible thing on earth. Uh, next question. That's not Pad uh, for St. Paddy's Day. Uh, what was the original color that was associated with St. Patrick's Day? Spoiler alert: It's not green. You do? I do. What is it? Oh, purple? Nope. No. Gold. Blue. It is it blue. Was a light blue. Ooh. Do you know why it was changed? Um, no, I do not recall it was why it was changed. But I would guess because, well, St. Patrick's or Ireland is the Emerald Island. So uh, it was as many things in Ireland. It was in response to uh, not being happy with British rule. <laughs> uh, oh. It was in 1798. Uh, they wore green, bright green uniforms in protest of British rule. And actually, that is why, uh, it, it supposedly, it was a long time ago, but one of the main reasons why it was called the Emerald Isle, not just for its pretty green landscapes, but also uh, it being united against uh, British monarchy. So no, I thought it was because they got rid of Salesforce and put in service now. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> 
All right. Day, I've been drinking. Things like that might come out. I mean, that's the if point, right? We've been, we've been around then. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that would be the reason. <laughs> yeah, it's for us, guys. That's for we're the Emerald Isle. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so this, now that we've got our little lane set up, we do have the running uh, one after another because for our use case, that seems the most sense. Now we can start adding in activities. Um, activities are, are, you know, very, very similar to what they are in Flow Designer. Um, if I were a, you know, if I was kind of more of like a citizen developer and I was kind of trying to architect this for the pro or low coder team to take over, I have the ability to do so by just doing placeholder. So technically I could build this whole thing out, like essentially sketch out my app before building anything. Um, I use this now all the time because typically when I was, like building my flows, I would just like write them down on paper and kind of, mm -hmm. or not paper, but like in a, like on my iPad, essentially move stuff around. But now I don't have to do that outside of service now. Um, so that is a huge uh, little uh, fun fact of the day that's not Ireland related. Uh, utilize placeholder <laughs> activities to help you build your app before building your app. It's pretty- Well, can I ask a couple things? Yes, please. One in the bottom center. Hit hit hide on that little tag that's down there. Bottom okay. center. Got it. Is it oh, gone? No, you you like stopped sharing. Oh, wait. <laughs> well, there was a, it, right next to stop sharing was hide. <laughs> well, I I guess I clicked the wrong one. One sip of the sake and she's gone. Oh, stop. <laughs> Must on, be I've got strong a, sake. I've got to move around my windows to get the thing big enough to share my screen again. I apologize. Um, this is, is live coding happy hour right now. No, I'm being mean. Today. Well, polished demo. No, this <laughs> is very much a live code happy hour yeah. life experience. Yeah, all right. And then yeah. on this one, can you make it just a wee bit bigger in the font? That I can do. Thank Aww. you for the reminder. Nice. Thank you for the reminder. Back to your regularly scheduled happy hour. Happy hour. Yes. Uh, what was I saying? You said you had a couple of questions. Were there any questions in the right. chat? Um, it, there was a question about uh, more or less a commentary about low coding seeming to take longer to configure this stuff. First of all, I wouldn't want to make a flow like this in script. Uh, no. And while script can be quicker for some things, if there's a low code capability that does the same thing, always, always, always take the low code option because you will thank yourself later. It's in the maintenance where these things really start to pay dividends. It yeah. may seem like, especially if there's a learning curve involved, uh, you know, if you put two people down that have never touched the platform before, odds are it's going to be quicker to train the person on a low code, no code configuration thing than it is to get them scripting. If you're an experienced coder, then obviously you've cleared one learning curve and you've got another one to go. But the learning curve is less steep on the low code, like flow designer, et cetera. And the technical debt is far, far less when you have to hand it off to somebody else or you yourself come back in a couple of years and look at the code and go, now, what did I do here? How did, what was, what was my algorithm? As yeah. opposed to like glancing at a flow or a process, uh, a playbook and going, it's self-explanatory. It's really yeah. in the maintenance that it pays off. I was the biggest offender of that back at my, my old company that I used to work for. Um, I love scripting. And so I was the only one on our team for a, a long period of time. And because it was easier for me, I would script all the stuff that yeah. didn't need to be scripted. So one, I could have used my time probably a bit better on things that are exclusively done through code, right? Or... Uh, you know, years later, they're still finding bad code I wrote all over the platform. So and to, like, be wow. fair, to be fair, there weren't all the low code capabilities five, six years That's ago true. that there are today. So scheduled jobs, they were scripted. You didn't have a yeah. choice. It, it wasn't until we got Flow Designer that you said, run this nightly. And you know, I was able to crush like four scheduled jobs and two script includes that had hundreds of lines of code into them into like a flow and a decision table. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's way better. You know, anybody five years from now will be able to glance at that and go, I know exactly what he was doing. And we're not running this nightly. We're going to run it every 12 hours. Change the decision mm -hmm. table, done. It's not taking apart this JSON object from some API call that like, don't go there. Anyway, we're off on a, on a <laughs> political rant at this point. 
<laughs> that's okay. That's, I mean, they're all serve. These are all tools that are serving that purpose, right? Of like, here yeah. is something that everyone can utilize versus just a small section of, you know, traditional pro code backend developers can utilize. So I always go with the, 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 the mass over the, the specific person. If, okay. the dude, if the dude who's been doing this for 40 years can convert, <laughs> don't tell me you can't. True. So uh, let's go ahead and start adding some activities, though, to our our overall flow here. So give me give me an example of what to add. I will admit I am a pad newbie as well. So I might stumble through this a little bit on my own trying to figure it out. But also that is the point of live coding happy hour. <laughs> so give me an example, an assessment. So this request How about a in. checklist task. I like it. Let's click checklist tasks. So um, it walks us through the ability to kind of create a uh, activity, not only also something to automate something, but also you can determine when this runs. So you can make the agent specifically click start and start this activity. It can go immediately after the previous one is done, or again, kind of just like immediately go, um, which again, probably the customers <laughs> love that, but not always the healthiest internally. So checklist tasks, let's go uh, back here. So it looks like you can create templates for or checklist tasks template. or use a template. Let's see if we've got one that we can just simply use. Instant response demo. Sure, why not? Why not? I'm and sure then... that has everything to do with, you know, rats invading your home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably, uh, but it Most also gives snakes. us the opportunity to utilize our data pill picker, aka uh, the goofiest named thing on the entire platform. <laughs> uh, by clicking this, we can, again, similar to Flow Designer, pick th from things that we've already utilized while building this process. So you, you can see our trigger. The goofiest name thing? You think that's the goofiest name thing? <laughs> what do you? What is then, if it's not data pill picker, which, is, which sounds like something from a like a uh like cat in the hat yeah <laughs> slush bucket <laughs> slush. <laughs> okay in the chat below yes. what, what you think the goofiest, goofiest thing is on service <laughs> things on the platform that you love the name i just think data pill picker sounds it's it sounds like a british insult that you'd call it like you're such a data pill picker like it just <laughs> sounds like a <laughs> it sounds goofy man <laughs> All right, so we can tag in SLAs as well. Uh, we can tag in whether or not they can skip their checklists as well um, and then showcase the outputs um, and how they will look within the agent designer too. So we've got our checklist tasks all kind of converted. I'll delete my placeholder activity. Uh, anything else before we switch over to maybe an optional activity? Hmm. Need some feedback. Scheduling, so we can I think create a we task. should ask our our audience what type of pests are we uh, removing? Is it leprechauns, snakes, <laughs> uh, pixies? Yeah, what are we doing? Well, possibly too. With before the advocates. get them out of here. <laughs> get them out of here. There's too many of them. <laughs> well, if you ask my cat, we have an infestation of oven mitts because he brings <laughs> us one every night. He sleeps with an oven mitt. He's he's got his own oven mitt, and every night he'll bring it to our door, and you hear this, my wife, my wife, and he drops it in front of us. Like, <laughs> oh, thanks, you, you killed another oven mitt. I didn't know we had a pest problem with that. What a brave warrior! Um, I was just better than bringing us a squirrel or a rat or something. True. I was just putting in a uh, a simple email as well, just to say, hey team, there's a, a new pest control request, so I can go here and maybe send it to like the assignment group, um, or not in there to here. I'll go to the assignment group. Yeah, why not? Pest control request. Well, have the number in the header, like a good, good, good little developer, and then say, hey, oh, new snake. Go get her. Go get him. There we go. Wait for user input. Nah, that's that's what we got that all covered. And then we'll go ahead and save. So we've reached the end of our lane time for another Ireland themed trivia question of the day. Um, oh, what state has the most concentrated Ireland Irish population by self report? That is Massachusetts. Okay, Massachusetts. Keep in mind, there was a Dublin, Ohio, my home city. We had a Dublin software release. We did. 
Because it's all in, in theme. Nah, it's New York City, man. New York City. 13% according to them, which I bet it's like, I've, I always see that statistic. It's funny because so many people, they're like, oh, I have like strong Irish heritage and they'll go and do like a genealogy report and it's like 0. 0.004. <laughs> Pretty fun. Did you hear about the population in Ireland? No. It's Dublin. Uh, oh, stop. <laughs> stop. <sighs> well, I'll put one more thing in our scheduling lane. Uh, give me a, give me a, give me an example. Help me work through this as a newbie to pad. What should I put in as our next thing for scheduling? What do we got? We got common activities. Um, we can wait for it to be assigned. So we can wait for assigned to try it. Okay. Uh, wait for condition. And then the record is going to be our trigger record. Okay. Okay. Sharon, and I'm hoping you have more experience with process automation designer than I do. I have done some labs on it. I have not had the pleasure of using it in a work environment yet. You, but I like labs. the that's, idea of That's it. an expert in my opinion. The thing <laughs> I like about it is the fact that you can have so many sort of disconnected things in one pane. So like, for example, there's so many times when I'm trying to find what all happens in a process mm -hmm. and you have to go look at the flow and you have to go look at the record and then look at the children records and all of this different stuff that's going on with it. Um, but with your playbook, you can see its life cycle altogether. Nice. I like that idea. You, you hit on something, too, that made me remember that one of the key values of process automation designer is it truly is like cross-departmental. Mm -hmm. You're not just focusing. If we need something out of this pest control that has to do with HR, for example, let's go check the HR records and see if this person is allergic to snakes or you, know, so you you have access not only to other data, but to other um, process elements. You can act on those. Very much so. Love it. Um, also, uh, similar to, uh, and, and correct me on this, Chuck, if I'm wrong, is this similar to Flow Designer in that you can create custom activities for Process Automation Designer as well? I don't know. Well... <laughs> I think you can. I, I believe well, you click can. The button. Let's see what happens. Oh gosh! Don't make me look worse than I already am. Well, I guess it kind of does look like you again. Create live one. coding happy hour. You get to test whatever you want. I'm not saying we're going to create one. I just wanted to see what the form looked like, True. and that looks like you can create an activity and choose what scope it works in and automation and plan or lay layout. What's that mean? Yeah. Uh, if it would scroll down, I'd let you know, but <laughs> it's not letting me scroll down. So uh, next one. Maybe. Try again. Maybe you oh, need to but... pick a flow or action for it to. Mm -hmm. Won't let me. <laughs> no, uh, do use the magnifying glass. There you go. Need to document it. Uh, it's getting a little too complicated, boys and girls. Let's stick We're with this. We're exploring. No, stick with the story. I'm tell uh, this... my brother when I'm lost. We're just doing reconnaissance at this point. Well, this would be a great opportunity to also uh, leave in the chat that this is also a pre-release. So uh, safe harbor. This is not the general release just yet. Um, the first patch for this actually will be coming out right as the first release comes out. So if you're playing around with this and you're experiencing any small bugs, uh, be, at, be at ease. This is not a finished product just yet. Alrighty, now uh, for what we were talking about earlier, which is the concept of optional activities. So right now we've got a couple of lanes that if we go ahead and test them, so let's create a test record first, um, we can see how that runs and what we will need to, uh, um, sorry, I'm not the best at multitasking while I'm speaking, I apologize. Uh, we are gonna Wait, create a how test many demos have you done in your life? <laughs> I apologize. Uh, but usually you're not t like typing and speaking at the same time. I guess that's what I was referring to. And a peanut gallery. And a peanut gallery and the, and the chat <laughs> and my uh, 
list of silly uh, Irish related questions. <laughs> the uh, second or the next one, speaking of, what is St. Patrick's real name? St. Patrick's real name. Hmm. David. <laughs> no. Carl. Does that sound like an Irish name to you? David? No. Carl? No. Uh is it is it like a normal name we would have heard of before? No. <laughs> Not at all. Is Not it at one all. of those like Gaelic things that you can't pronounce? A hundred percent. Okay. His name was Maywin Sakat. M-A-E-W-Y-N-S-U-C-C-A-T. Which is pronounced Carl. <laughs> which is yeah, which is honestly with the name that Siobhan is spelled, I wouldn't I wouldn't be like surprised if that's actually was... pronounced Patrick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I, this I is... apologize if I just offended anybody. This is how um, our our playbook currently looks. So we can see that it automatically sent that email as we indicated. So it said, hey, we sent this out to the pest control team. There is a new pest control request for us to address. It sent this out and added the, the number as we specified as well. It completed this and then it showcased that um, our checklist as well. So if we check these boxes, it'll automatically load, complete that assessment and move on to the wait for condition, but I'd already assigned it to me. So the wait for already completed. Now this is great, right? Working your way through playbooks can be very helpful, but doesn't offer a lot of flexibility. So what if we added in some optional flexibility? That is where these brand new optional activities come in. So if I flip this little switch here, you will get two new, uh, a new column and a new row to your screen. So I apologize. It looks very crowded. That's also because I'm heavily zoomed in uh, on, my, <laughs> on my screen here today. So if I wanted to go ahead and add in an optional activity, all, it's the exact same process as you do so when you were building them in the actual dependent activities. Uh, you can create them as a global entity. So what that means is that you can be in any lane and this can be available. So if I click add global activity, um, let's say that there is an instruction and say, uh, I don't know, call in the big guns, let St. Patrick know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need help. Something along those lines. Click save and then we run our test again. That will appear no matter where we are in the process. However, you know, if we want this to only appear during the assessment stage, you can click and drag. Um, also, if you're doing this and you realize, oh, this should really become an optional activity, you could even move the uh, dependent ones around as well. Uh, be careful, is all I say. If you build things a certain way and then you drag them all around, especially if they're when to start condition, is something that is not just uh, after the following or after previous. Um, just be careful of that, um, mm -hmm. so that no, by moving things around, you are not uh, finagling with how specific things are running. So I do like that that's visible on the card as well, so you can see it though. That is the the best as well, because that way, like for this email, like if we make this instead of immediately, we make this manual. We'll see that we actually have to like click a button to send the email. It adds it to the optional Ooh. for us. So kind of, kind of cool. But we're going to move that back over here. But see, it moved it back to immediately. So all good in that regard. So let's go ahead and test this. So now we have this optional activity in the assessment lane. So that means when we're in the scheduling lane, it should not appear as a potential thing to do. So if we test this, we select our, our lovely little pest control Little optional. No test. more leprechauns. No more leprechauns. They're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and our last trivia question of the day as well is, uh, what is the oldest and longest St. Patrick's Day parade in the world? Chicago. <laughs> no. New York. Yes, it is New York. It's so funny. All these statistics, most of them are about like the American interpretation of uh, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day, which is kind of funny. Oh, I already ran it off this. Um, this. Let me do another uh, test record. I apologize. 
Let's do run another. Let me do. Um, let me open up App Engine Studio. That's interesting, actually. So that is helpful to know that once you've already got one running, you probably don't want to create another uh, sort of instance of the playbook happening on the same record. I, I set the stipulation for the playbook is run through once. So I I intentionally sabotaged myself by not letting me run it through it twice. So it's Oh, quick note from uh, Lisa out there. She says, because you moved out the email, the checklist was automatically changed to immediately. So don't be confused that it ran. You need to yeah. move that checklist back to after previous. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. So let's go back here. We'll pop in. We'll sit. Pest control She's three. enjoying an exciting Friday night in Germany. <laughs> Which one did she? Oh. I think I'll go. watch Live Coding Happy Hour. There's nothing on Netflix tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and run our test. So we'll switch to pest control three. And then we'll run our guy. So if we open up this here. So we'll see that. Where did I... Huh. Was the so our optional activity is under assessment. The ah, so I forgot for I apologize. So it sent our email to mm -hmm. add in the optional activities. Look for that little ellipses. That's where I was. I was trying to remember if you click the uh, big gear or if you go to that little ellipses. But the little ellipses is the uh, kicker. Okay. So once you add in this, it'll allow you to add in your activity. So if I wanted to add in our activity, you can see that the instruction to uh, call in the big guns can be added. And that way it's tracked with the overall history of this um, of this ticket. So you don't know, you know, if this person's kind of going off the, off the uh, script and doing things proactively to help a customer or whomever. Um, that's logged in the process to know also if that needs to be added to the process as a permanent fixture later on. Because think about it. There's so many times, or at least in my previous jobs, where something was like an optional thing, mm -hmm. but everyone had to do it anyway, like a specific level of approval or the opposite. Like that approval level was always skipped over because the person never, you know, checked that inbox. And so you're always having to go the extra mile. Why not just change the process to uh, to reflect that? So it can help track all those things. So then we can check our tasks. And if we did all as well, it'll kick over to the scheduling. And there is no optional activities. As you can see, there's no ellipses there. So it was a lane-oriented optional activity. There we go. Any Very questions cool. about process automation designer and optional activities? Uh, there was one question from Mode. He, he asked if there's any kind of API where we can trigger a flow from an API. And I don't, you know, much like when you're in Flow Designer, you can say copy code snippet and use that. I don't know of anything, but let's go check that. But uh, the, the, the ellipses that right next, across, activate. Whatever, next activate, see what's under there. Duplicate or deactivate. Mm, okay. Try well, properties. That's not it. That's not it. Okay, and that doesn't mean there isn't one, but I just don't know about it. Hmm. Um, there's also a question here from Eloy. Does pad make sense in the global scope? Let's say for an onboarding process. Ooh, that's Does a good it question. Make sense? I would think so. I believe. I mean, you definitely can make pro uh, process. I believe processes in the global scope. Um, I may or may not be wrong. Isn't there already a a workbook for onboarding. I don't. I don't spend a lot of time in our packaged apps, but I believe that there is already a default uh, in that regard. I have a okay. trivia question for you. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> what um, does it have to do with uh, a global process automation? No, it has to do with St. Patrick's Day and drinking. Okay. So from one to five, okay. where do you think in terms of popularity? Where do you think St. Patrick's Day is for most popular or least popular uh, drinking day in the U.S.? In the U.S.? Yeah. Is it the most, the least, somewhere in between? I would say it's, it's not the, I would say New Year's Eve is probably the most 
or or uh, Super Bowl Sunday is probably the most, right? It's fourth. Fourth. First okay. is New Year's Eve. You were right. Oh, with that one. Dang. Christmas thought it was Fourth of Day, July. Christmas Day, and then the Fourth of July. They don't count Super Bowl Sunday as a holiday. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it hasn't been ratified by Congress yet. <laughs> I've read it's close. <laughs> um, that would be the best bipartisan bill of all time, making Super Bowl Sunday. Everyone would be like, we've all come together. To... <laughs> awesome. That's a good one. Fourth. That's surprising to me, especially given the time of year. You know, it's like the big holiday for Q1 other than uh, – like New Year's Eve, but that's the first day. <laughs> so why was St. Patrick's Day once celebrated in May instead of March? May? I have no idea. Just once, just once. World in War? 2001, a foot and mouth outbreak ran rampant in Ireland. So Dublin's St. Patrick's Day parade was moved to May with a great turnout of 1.2 million. <laughs> I bet so. I bet once everyone's not, you know. Um, oh, we got a response from Lisa about the uh, onboarding. So essentially what she says is that there are onboarding example playbooks um, uh, uh, in the playbook demo. So check that out. Uh, as always, everything is safer in a scope. So you can do things in global. You could also be pretty good as far as, like there's all, very few reasons to do things exclusively in global anymore. Um, however, that doesn't mean it's never appropriate. It just means that the best recommendation usually is to scope it and then open up the, the membrane of that scope as wide as you need it, you know? <laughs> According to Hallmark, how many Americans exchange St. Patrick's Day cards each year? Oh, no, no one. Like very <laughs> few. More than zero. 12 very few. million. 12 million Americans. Really? Now, do you feel so bad? More Guinnesses are still drunk than yeah. this part. <laughs> really. These are probably the drunk people sending cards. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just seems like an odd holiday for cards, I guess. Like, I think of anniversary, birthday, graduation, Christmas, funeral, funeral get well soon, but like not like a St. Patrick's Day card. Maybe you're the, one, for like you're the one who wanted a Super Bowl holiday. <laughs> You said I thought I miss I misunderstood. I thought you meant events associated with drinking, which I'm like it has to be the Super Bowl. <laughs> I intentionally don't leave or I, like I, I leave my house very early on Super Bowl Sunday because I'm like there's going to be too many wackadoos oh, yeah. <laughs> driving yeah. when they should not be because they're over the limit. <laughs> and the Fourth of July. Well, speaking of drinks, how are we rating? You know, we've kind of come to a, a logical conclusion and a time conclusion for today's fun little exploration into process automation designer. Uh, what would everyone give their rating of their alcoholic beverage or, or not in my case uh, for today? I'll, I'll kick you off first, Chuck. I finished. It wasn't <laughs> that bad. It must have like all the nutmeg and coriander and stuff that made it taste like a pumpkin pie. Must have washed out. It tasted more like a standard porter with a nice body to it. I'm going to give this a four and a quarter. And the quarter point is, of course, our success factor. There you go. <laughs> Sharon, what about you? I would call mine a four. I like mm -hmm. Guinness. Uh, I do prefer cooking with it to drinking it. <laughs> That's fair. What do you cook in it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it makes for a great beef gravy, so I typically do a Guinness beef stew. Oh, that sounds really good. I'm getting that sounds, I know. That was, uh, <laughs> have you ever tried the, um, like, beer cheese soup, too? I've used oh, it good. for that. It's that's really good. good. Or beer brats, but I usually use cheap beer for my beer brats, not the expensive yeah. <laughs> stuff. Like, oh, someone left a case of Bud Light or Tecate. Let's make brats. <laughs> That's my parents' favorite beer, by the way, Bud Light. They, they're a big fan of Bud Light. Well, hey, drink what you like. It's just yes. going to end up in my brats if you leave it behind. Well, my uh, my drink, as you can tell, a uh, big old L here. So if you ever see this at the uh, Japanese grocery store, maybe run for the hills. Um, I would give this, I guess, a 0. 0.5 for just the success factor alone. Um, nothing else is earned. It's I think it's mostly the, like... Um, viscosity that was a problem it's it like very thick creamy 
Well, it's a nigori. So the nigori okay. is the like the cloudy sake yeah, or yeah. unfiltered. Uh, it's filtered, but just coarsely. And it's but it's like a milkshake. It's like really, mm. really th <laughs> way thicker than I thought it was going to be. So not a recommendation. <laughs> Wasn't nigori um, also um, Voldemort's snake? That was Nikini. Nikini. <laughs> that was Nikini. That's a little island where they blew up the atomic bomb. That was Bikini. <laughs> I could do this all day, people. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we are so grateful for y'all attending today. Um, as, a, as a reminder, we have we still a couple more weeks of content for old Utah release coming out in celebration of its big GA next week. So keep an eye open for that as well. Um, for everything else, please visit our blog at devlink.sn slash blog and a complete list of our calendar at devlink.sn slash Utah. Uh, right, I got to get, oh. get, get that going. Hold on, I was answering a question. There, Utah. Oh, <laughs> and Sharon, uh, where can the audience find you? Thank you so much for joining us here today. Shout out <laughs> anything that you'd like to plug. You can find me at S N Debs as Sharon Barnes. You can also find me at Women Now. I'm one of the board members with that website. So womennow.sn. We have changed Wait, it from that, Women I Now. It, I thought it was dot .dev. We changed it. We realized that a lot of uh, individuals were thinking we were only doing developers. Okay. And we really want to reach out to any woman in the ServiceNow community, admin, developer, business analysts, whatever your scope is, you're part of us. You're, so you're, you did like we did. We went to EuroDNS and registered a domain in Senegal and overpaid for it, right? <laughs> I was not on that task. That was handled by a different <laughs> member. <laughs> Wait, is that what SN, .sn comes from? It's, it's come from the country from a... of Senegal. Yeah. Really? Yep. <laughs> it's really funny. They're like, why are all these weirdos in San Diego buying all of our domains? <laughs> That's hey, hilarious. The people, the people of Tonga love it because everything dot, dot .to, like mm -hmm. that island. Huh. Is, well, I don't know if the country gets any money for that, but. The, the third place too. I want to plug is you can also find me at Knowledge23. So Ooh. I would love to see many of you there. Awesome. Are you, doing, are you doing a specific course that you'd like to call out or a specific workshop? What, do you, what are you doing at Knowledge? I am doing a app or a lab where you build a Tamagotchi. And while you're doing that, you're also learning how to do AngularJS. Oh, my um, gosh. I and, take that. And, directives. <laughs> and the other thing that I'm going to be participating in is 15% and fearless. It is women developers going over just some of the challenges and successes that we go through in this industry. That sounds fun. I really want to take the Tamagotchi class. That sounds so fun. And what a great topic as well to talk about like women in service now. That's so exciting. Um, I, the first time I saw women now, I believe what like in person was last knowledge and seeing all the event and all that stuff happening was like so exciting to see it meant mm -hmm. the world. Yeah, a lot of great stuff going on in knowledge. The the developer experience called CreatorCon is happening. So be sure when you register for knowledge over at knowledge.servicenow.com down there in the corner, be sure to check that box that says I am also up for anything related to CreatorCon. That's where you're going to find the deeper dives into how to build a Tamagotchi or you know, fun, fun, creative stuff. Uh, not, not that, you know, you're not going to find some fun stuff at knowledge, but you're going to find more developer uh, related things. There's the hack zone. There's the whole community. There's developer meetups happening. There's the, a keynote specifically for creator con for developer audience. So I invite you to check that out. Also, the, uh, the course catalog is currently available. So while you can't necessarily book anything yet, you can see what's out there. So I heavily encourage you to do that. Maybe write down a list of what you'd want to book. And then the second it opens, jump on it. Because some classes go really, really quickly. And fun fact, if they fill up quickly, there is a chance that they will ask us to do more sessions of them. So for example, if everyone wants to do the Tamagotchi class um, and it's all booked up the, the first day, uh, they might uh, make poor Sharon do it twice or thrice, who knows, uh, yeah. which would be great for everyone else, but it'd probably make her week pretty full. <laughs> but for That's a good what reason. it's about. Yes. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much, Lauren, for showing us around Process Automation Designer. And thank you, Sharon, for joining us. 
awesome. Are we ready to play the video? I think so. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day and great weekend, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.